It's five past three. You're to London's radio station. Danny Baker on BBC London 94.9. Weekday afternoons from three. as toughens and changing, it changes as canal water. Armour then defeats, nestling in green nowhere, Miss Havisham Ling. Feudal still, Optimath and Eremite. And Vanessa Felt just had a go at me for calling it the ignoble art of spelling, by the way. She did. Hang on. She doesn't hold back, Vanessa Feltz. Uh, we were in the uh, uh, Balin Lenity. You know, you remember Balin used to do the breakfast show and all stops in between <laughs> since yes. I left. Yeah, Anything and everything, really. I refused to shake hands with Balin when I came in because I said, you've been so many other places elsewhere there. I'm dirty right out of the shower, Danny. <laughs> right out of the shower. <laughs> oh, man, alive sometimes. It's hard to bite back the appropriate response, but we'll continue. So I'm in the uh, charity shop over the road buying a... Uh, if I told you, people would think, oh, that's just... Yeah, he was uh, buying a collar. All right, come on. What am I holding? What is that, Balin? What have I got there? Uh, th- that is uh, the apple cart yeah. with Noel Coward and uh, Margaret Layton. Margaret Layton and, and, and the master in the apple cart. And uh, I, I hurriedly went and grabbed that when, uh, when uh, my undertone single and Vanessa was in there. <laughs> no, uh, Vanessa turned and said, hey, you on yesterday's show with uh, talking about the Nova? I can't remember. She doesn't actually finish the last word of every sentence. Uh-huh. That's not allowing your way in. It's a wonderful tactic. And uh, I would listen to it, but I couldn't believe my ear. I, I, I didn't. I turned to you and I, and I stood. I said, well, maybe the clue was in the the ignoble art of spelling. Maybe it was my through the looking glass upside down world. Yeah. Uh, and then we, we put this station to rights. In Uh-oh. about five, I said, look, I'm on the edge. I know. I just want to tell you one other thing. Does she spell ignoble for you? If not, if nothing if not charitable. Yeah. <laughs> it turns out that it's not just my aching back holding the studio up. <laughs> so, 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 a wonderful five minutes. She's an exhilarating woman. Good uh, afternoon, everybody. Uh, yesterday, man alive, you wasn't here, were you? Uh, you weren't here, Bailey, and you're going to be here for today. And uh, yesterday's show was like, uh, you, you wouldn't know what a genie is, but uh, over in this country, you get a, 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 a old fireworks that don't go off, uh-huh. and you, you break them up, and you get the gunpowder out, and then throw a match in there. You can't do oh, it Oh, yeah. There's a government sanction on it. But this Health was, and safety. This was up until a few years ago. Exactly. And uh, you throw a match in there, and it goes, Phew. and you call it a genie. Okay. It's really good. I mean, Lots of smoke. That's, that's all there is, mm. really. Uh, there's some kind of uh, nuclear flash. And that was yesterday's show. And uh, the onus is now, of course, it's easy to do a first show. Yeah. Uh, you know, you get through that on pea and vinegar. But uh, today's show, I think, will be a little more measured. Okay. If it stinks, then uh, you're no Amy LeMay. That's what we'll know from that. No, I'm fine with that. I never have been. Well, it's, it's good to be back with you. Uh, it's good to uh, not just talking to the audience here. Welcome, Balaam. Thank you very much, Danny. The music's too loud, they're telling us. Uh, well, you know, it, it's, it's up to people to find us. Yes. I keep meeting audiences. You've got to make people play. work for it. Exactly. Uh, now we play records. They take precedence. <laughs> Got a good set, you'll hear it. Let's have a look at our first time check after yesterday. We gave away all the, uh, where are we now? What is the real time? Okay. It says 1.33 there. Oh, no, that's wrong. Here we go. Uh, the time right now is Paul in the borough. Our dear friend Paul in the borough. And if you've got your little notebooks out, you'll know exactly what that is. I'll tell you what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be doing uh, Felt Such a Fool. Felt such a fool. Just Uh-oh. felt, just felt such a fool, and I'll tell you why in a moment. Because uh, Mountain Goat, who never feels such a fool, on my instruction after yesterday's show, makes me feel such a fool. Uh, haunted appliances, the light on the mouse on my computer indoors, even when I unplug it, it's still on. There are other haunted That's appliances. That's haunted. We're going to find out about those. But uh, anyway, we'll play some records, and, uh, and we got fun, and then the show ends. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. So, uh, having now moved on to... Oh, I can't keep doing this. this why didn't anyone stop me yesterday? This system plainly doesn't work. Do you want me to do it? We're finding listeners' names. Yeah, what's the time now? It's then? Lynn and East Sheen. It's Lynn and East Sheen. Uh, so, yeah, I've got this light on the... Uh, on the uh, uh, computer on the little mouse, the mouse yeah. and even when you unplug it it stays on it didn't used to and now it sits there with an eerie glow you know you need go on an exorcist yeah i know there is that but it's, it's, not... it's unplugging it and rattling it around it still doesn't work tell me about it buddy let it go on well no my mobile phone did that just uh, last week it's got it's one of those mobiles that's got a uh, a flash on it for mm-hmm. when you take a picture okay so my phone got so yeah. hot yeah. i so was hot. ahead of that curve you know now everyone's saying oh yeah. those balls who take photos everywhere i was ahead of that curve because i used to do it at football matches uh, i used to go if you go to a football match now you look at them all, all trying to capture every minor event of football matches. yes when goals are scored now people used to be real screamers and huggers that i know have turned into dickie attenborough they pan <laughs> 
can. <laughs> As the goals score, they, they kind of crouch and go behind and pan around. It can ruin anything. The moment. It, it ruins everything. So it? my phone was yeah. so hot I couldn't yeah. hold it. Mm -hmm. So hot I couldn't hold it. Uh -huh. Turned it off, uh -huh. and the, the light is still shining. The, the light where you're supposed to take a picture is still beaming until it slowly dies. No, well, yours slowly dies. Mine stays on all the night. It's still on. All night. It stays on all night. It's the oddest thing. And uh, that uh, that's haunted. We know that for sure. And if yeah. you've got any appliance in your house, you figure maybe you're haunted. We still do... Uh, Emails and texts and stuff, don't we? Yeah, you can email us, margaret.rutherford at bbc.co.uk. Only the other shows never mention it. Uh, and uh, you can text us on uh, 07786200949. And uh, you can you can really get in with this because we're looking for the most haunted appliances. Uh, either, they could have since passed on, to the, you know, gone beyond the veil, if you like. Do haunted appliances die? No. Yeah, well, you know, they're, they're still they're, around. They're, they're, they're wraith like, uh, mm. what it is. And here's the other thing we're doing because since I was away, uh, you know, I was away for four or five months, Brendan's too busy to have noticed, but I was away <laughs> for four or five months. Where'd and, you uh, Where are you going? Uh, uh, and what happened was, in the meantime, was that uh, 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 Jonathan Ross got an OBE. Uh, and, I, and I was furious to be off the air when Jonathan was given an OBE, because he was. And, you know, and quite rightly, I, uh, I, I joy yoked him about it whenever I, we met him. But, uh, of course, he's now Jonathan Ross OBE. And so uh, I decided to open the book, and I know the show is nothing if not uh, congested most days, and we've only got two hours now. But I'm going to ask you if you want to, probably this is best on text, 0778620949, uh, is if you want to give yourself three letters after your name, tell us what they stand for. And every time you come through, you can see, you can say, this is, a, mm. this is Valerie here, JN3. JN3. <laughs> that's that's that why I'm not count. Vanessa. I can only come up with two letters, <laughs> JNL, or whatever it is. And you tell us what they stand for. If you want to give yourself three letters after your name, because Jonathan's now OBE. This is a four-month-old reaction by me. Uh, but certainly, we're taking those today. Uh, you can call us up, 207 looking for haunted appliances. And here's what happened yesterday with... Uh, Mountain Goat, uh, Julia runs the show, uh, Mountain Goat, because she never puts a foot wrong, you see. And uh, uh, my headphones, only one side of them was working yesterday. Uh, mm. you know, and I, I, think, I think hissy fit is too strong a word, but that's what was being bounded around after. And so she called one of the engineers who came in and said, well, well he didn't say, if, it had been, if he hadn't had the BBC contract, he would have used that well-known kind of phrase, well, it's because you've got to balance over one side, you dozy cow. That, that was what he would have said. But of course he said, I think, I think what's happened here is, and Julia was furious with me. Oh, well, you made me look such a fool. I said, well, you didn't notice it. I had the balance all over you one You can't side. just walk around making people look like a fool. There it is. So he said, you made me look such a fool. Any of you have got of those, any of you have got of those, whereby, you know, you might have been in a righteous huff, or you just, we've all called uh, D-E-R out, <laughs> if they're still going, D-E-R out to men's Speaking television. of three initials. Exactly. D-E-R have come out, and they've, uh, domestic electronic rentals, mm. by the way, Ben. And they come out, and they say, we've well, not plugged it in. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh... I don't know why I kind of keep getting out a friend of mine's mobile number. I've been away too long. That's what it is. 0207224 We're looking for uh, haunted appliances, your experience of things. There's no other reason. They wouldn't act like that. We're looking for domestic appliances and things in work, vending machines and that. They wouldn't act like that if they weren't possessed. 0207224 you want to give yourself three letters after your name and tell us what they actually stand for? Uh, anything at all. But uh, whenever you ring up in future, you must quote those at all so we know who we're dealing with. Um, if you're, you know, in particular, this is a, uh, an absolutely fascinating anecdote that goes with them, but I mean, just three letters. You mustn't extend it. You mustn't extend it. So, uh, I mean, I'm DJ Y. I'm DJ of the year. Oh, you see, but I, I, oh, I'm, oh, I'm willing yeah. to sacrifice the oh, oh uh, yeah. Well, sometimes you have to to make it work. Exactly. So uh, get the ac an acronym only in there, uh, three letters only, and stick it after your name. What you got over there, Bailey? Well, I don't mean to point this out, but Chris the Lizard has 1506, and he also has 1519. Yeah, well, that's an administrative error. As I said yesterday, these first few shows are going to be kink worker outers. All right. That's how that's going to work. We're just going to let him have that. What about your brother who uh, worked in a shop window for a while? Uh, oh, sitting in a chair, Look, Jerry. Just give us that because I don't know. Uh, I don't know whether uh, you know some of our often listeners are aware of. Oh yeah, so, which, so Jerry, stock you spring. Yes, Jerry wanted to win a thousand dollars, and so this local furniture store was mm -hmm. having a competition where if you could sit in a chair in their shop window for a week, <laughs> that they would give you a thousand dollars for a week, and he would get bathroom breaks and such uh -huh. like that. So um, he sat in the chair for a good solid week. Mm -hmm. Now what he failed to realize is that the, this was a chain. Mm -hmm. So they had this going all over the country. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the week, I think it was something like 12 people yeah. all across the country had sat in a chair for the entire week. So he ended up getting something like $46. But my mom has a lovely picture of him asleep in the chair, in the shop window. Oh, and he got to keep the chair. See, now that will be considered performance art, and it will be something yeah, confrontational. Yes. But then 
it was just goofy, right? It was just a goofy store. It was just, yeah, it was just a goofy store. He, but right after that, um, mm-hmm. uh, he, he cut off the tip of his finger at the factory. Yeah. Uh, well. And he said, oh, well, I'm not going to sue him because in about 15 years, when I'm up for promotion, if I've sued him, they won't promote me. Yeah. yeah because, you know, and I thought that, that was logical that's actually, you know, that That's the way. That's why Harold Lloyd never sued his company after they blew his hand off. He wears a rubber glove in most of his films. Oh, Harold Lloyd. there he you go. He explosive, blew his hand off. Here's a Mark in Tottenham. Good morning, Mark. Oh, no, I have to fade him up these days, don't I? Good morning, Mark. Morning, Candyman. Uh, Mark, what have you got for us? We stick with the morning. Yeah, uh, I got you, by the way, yeah. Uh, so what do you want to tell us, Mark? What's the three words that end in C-E-E-D? Uh, succeed. Succeed. Proceed. Proceed, yeah. And exceed. Exceed. Uh, what? Exceed. Exceed. Is that the exceed. other one? Exceed. I set the question, didn't I? Yes, yeah, it's it exceed. Yes, it is. What about supersede? No, that doesn't. That's E-D, believe it or not. Supersede and superseded is E-D-E-D. Uh, and, and it's the other thing, Mark. There's only the, there's three words in in G-R-Y. I've done this so many times, but let's do it again. Uh, what, what do you think they are, Mark? What do you say they are? Oh, that's the after this, after this, after this. It wasn't supersede, a superhero. The what? Supersede, a superhero. Uh, I, have, I have no idea what he's talking about. Uh, we've got, uh, so there's angry yeah. and there's hungry, but there's a third one. Nobody ever gets, there's a three in G-R-Y. Can I guess? Go on, then. Energy. That doesn't end in G R Y. You illiterate Tennessee energy. tramp. Energy. Energy. N N R G. Oh no, it doesn't. Yeah, no, no, I, 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 I can only apologise. Amy LeMay will be back as soon as we can uh, get her out of the grip of her lover. Here's a uh, uh, Paul of the M4. Good morning, Paul. Uh, good morning, Danny. Oh no, listen to that. That's oh, the other fellow, and it won't you. That's it. That's how that works. Go on, Paul. Are we, are we there, then? Yeah, you go on. Carry on. Jo- jolly good. Hold mm-hmm. it. Just... Trick set, Danny. Yeah, okay. Go on. Fantastic it is. Mm-hmm. After you played with it for a few hours... Oh, sorry, it was a haunted what set? Skylet's trick set. Uh, okay, good, yeah. What, what, why was it haunted? This is great. Well, why was it haunted? you play with it for a few hours, yeah. and it must build up such an electrical static charge that you put your cars back on and they go on their own. Yeah, wow. How old were you when you were doing this? Uh, oh, it was, uh, I don't know, ten years ago or so? They say you sound a little old to be doing that then. So, I mean, I'm thinking if you was eight years old, you genuinely would have think that was haunted, wouldn't you? Well, freak out, isn't it? Yeah, but this is me and my son, you see. Oh, okay. So, yeah. yeah. And, and, and that, yeah. It, 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 that's the proper uh, scientific explanation, is it? That there's a static build-up in it? I can only imagine so, yeah. Oh, or the no. controllers get stuck or something, but it's, it's quite freaky, actually. Yeah, we liked that. It was going all night, they were. Or other, oh, all night? Oh, wow. All wow. Night. <laughs> Is it, that must be just like, that is the 21st century equivalent of the piano playing itself in the old manor house, isn't it? Exactly. The stay electric going round and round and round. Of course, you could have taken them off the track, but where's the fun in that? Why would you do that? It Paul, keeps you awake, doesn't it? It's Paul, great. Yeah, thank you very much indeed. Yeah. Believe me, yeah, there's been could, times... Can I also be... Go on. What? Uh, could I be Paul of Ascot, MHS? Go on, why would that be? Matt Paul Quinn fan, Dan. Oh, are you? Yes. Oh, do you know, do you, do you know, do you remind me before the end of the week, call up at a random point in any of the shows, and I'm going pl- to play a little. I am the centre of this universe. Oh, please. The yes, wind of time is blowing through me. <laughs> oh, lots of that before the end of the week. Thank you, Paul. Uh, what about MC'd? Huh? MC'd. What's MC'd? Like Master of Ceremonies, I MC'd. Yeah, but no, 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 that, that, that's a, uh, Vanessa will give us a proper term for that. It's a portmanteau. Oh, Glenn and Guilford's going to be depressed. What's the matter with you? What are you over there? Does this microphone work? I've got a microphone for you. Use his. It doesn't work. You just, this is the, she set the thing up, set the whole studio up. Here's Gail in St. Albans. Aniseed. Hey, Aniseed is with an S. Aniseed is with an S. Yes, my mate. She's reminding you. Yeah, but. who's stupid now? Good morning, Gail. Hi, Danny. Hi. Hey, girl. It's good to have you back. Bless you, girl. It's good to speak to you again. And I've got to say, uh, one or two people uh, yesterday pointed out that I made more fuss of Claire's muffin she sent us than of her new baby. And I, I'm so sorry about that. I should have. Uh, uh, what's the matter, Manning Goat? Sounds awful. It sounds awful. It does, doesn't it? It sounds like we're uh, broadcasting from Pirate Radio there. Okay, well, all right. Okay, so. Uh, well, um, go on, girl. I'm the mother of Andy boy, and now he can't wait to get out of the door. He knows from the radio. That's very good, yeah. We see how the school run goes once it starts because uh, there's congestion enough, and we don't want to add to it, but we'll, we'll, we'll see how we go. What have you got for us, Gail? I used to have a haunted printer for my computer. Uh, t- tell us okay. why so. Um, it just wouldn't work. Mm-hmm. And one day, in exasperation, I leant back on my chair, nearly fell off. On mm-hmm. the way down, I hit the piano keys, and it started oh. working. Yeah, and, 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 and after uh, that, mm-hmm. it would only ever print if I hit the piano. And, and, oh, oh, that's <laughs> oh man! Yes. Why isn't that still a, uh, in a setup where you're near it, so you can just clang the piano and we can hear it burst? You'd pay good money life. for that, wouldn't you? Well, what was it's it? Just, did anyone ever come to see it? Did anyone, you know, uh, uh, put any altar water over it? Is it called altar water? No, that's an old musical song. Get me to the altar water. A uh, holy water, that's it. <laughs> I never put any holy water over it. Well, we we went past it with a garlic once. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's what the, you take up the piano waving, lid. No, you take, we wave an impromptu cross near it. You, um, you take up the piano lid, you put the garlic on there, and then you bring the piano lid down hard on the bulb of garlic, and I think you, you'll chase away the spirits. And nothing I think that could be it. Did nothing ever work? 
It only, seriously, it would only ever work. My friends used to say, I don't believe you, and I'd say, watch this. And they would even hold my hand with the mouse, and nothing happened. Wow. And then I'd lean behind me and actually Bang. punch the keys, and wow. it would start. I'm trying to find out, uh, because I, I can't remember, uh, I mean, you know, three and a half years ago, uh, Gail perfected all the little bits and pieces we play on the programme. But, uh, of course, the most frightening music in the history of the world, which is those uh, dead children singing... Oh, I hate it. Uh, oranges and hair, lemons. I'll find... Uh, my hair stands on end, I, 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 we will, I promise to bring everybody that, because as we're doing another haunted show, it's about haunted appliances. Is we're certainly going to do that again. I'll tell you what I have got, though, Gail, which we can bring you in the meantime. And thank you very much, Gail. Uh, you know the song, Jesus takes a frown. Oh, yes. And he turns it upside down. Is that Tammy Faye? Uh, it's Tammy Faye back here playing yeah. one of her puppet characters. And it's one of the most offensive records you've ever heard uh, in all your life. And we used to play it a lot on here. But I finally tracked down the album it was from. And, uh, yeah, and there's plenty on there like that. They're by no means the worst track. Does she it. have the Devil's After Me on there, which is my personal favourite? My personal favourite, I've got queued up here, and it's a song called God's Not Dead. Flying in the face of Nietzschean thoughts. <laughs> Flying in the face of Nietzschean thoughts. She and, was uh, always a forward thinker, Tammy Faye Baker. And, and, and as a long-time listener to the show will know, uh, lots of times, my wife bangs on the door and goes, what are you doing in there <laughs> if I play a record over and over again? Because whenever I play this, and I play it more than I like to admit, uh, I have to play the part of Nietzsche as well, who, uh, because Nietzsche would say, uh, he would argue with her as she sings this uh, uh, God's Not Dead song. So let's try this. If I can bring it up. This is Tammy Faye Baker singing God's Not Dead with interjections from Nietzsche. Let's try this. Here we go. <laughs> On what basis? He's still alive. God's not dead. But that's preposterous. He's still alive. God's not dead. But my work. He's still alive. I feel him in my hands. I feel him in my feet. I feel him all over me. No, God's not dead. And why do you say this? He's still alive. God's not dead. Have you read my book? He's still alive. God's not dead. Oh, all right then. He's still alive. I feel him in my head. See, she wins over Nietzsche by the end of it. It's a little work in progress at the moment, but I think, you know, Tammy Faye Baker's album, uh, and it's actually called Jesus Takes a Frown. You can get it on eBay, but you'll be fighting people at the moment who pay about $75 a pop for it. Uh, what do you got there, Baker? Oh, uh, this is from Sally and Hayes in Middlesex. She says, I just wanted to tell you that when mm -hmm. I use my remote control for cable TV, mm -hmm. it turns my lights on yeah, or that, off that, or it dims them. Yeah, yeah. She said, it doesn't happen all the time. Otherwise, I'd be quite happy with the fact that I've got remote control lights. Look, but the, but the, the, in the old days, you you could hardly turn on the television without seeing a sketch of a house going wrong. People were always doing it. Bruce Forsyth, everybody used to do sketches where you turned on the shower mm. and the, the, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the blender used to go on. But there are real houses like that. And we are trying to nail them down today. We want you to call us uh, 0207 224 uh, Otherwise, this morning, uh, we're doing uh, three letters after your name, please. Three letters after your name. Do you name. remember the clapper? Yeah, certainly the clapper. Clap a, on. I've got a, Clap I've got a, off. I've got a, a, a lamp bought for us recently. It's one of those you touch. Oh, a touch lamp. And dim. And you touch it again, it's lighter. And you touch it, it's really bright. My mom has one either side of her sofa. Well, I've got one healthily just between me and my uh, record player. And every time I reach across to it. Okay. First stage, second stage, third stage. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Yeah, go back it goes straight out again. Yes, it does. Good afternoon, everyone. Joe Cocker, by the way. Quentin Chris, we're beginning the wake copies of the Naked Civil Sermon, by the way. Uh, when we return, plenty to be getting on with, uh, including, I'll bring you that absolutely uh, toe-curling, scary piece of child, uh, children singing, Lost in a House, when we return. Right, I'm going to try and do this uh, manually, in other words, once a year. Let's try this, here's it? On 94.9 FM, BBC London. With the headlines, I'm Lisa O'Sullivan. You're listening to London's radio station. This Thursday, BBC London 94.9 presents... Please, sir... I want some more. What? More? More of this? That's what you're doing in Americana. So I was getting married to a Brazilian lady. It turned out to be a lady, did it? Sorry? And this. They are putting geese into a wheelie bin. There are not going to be enough wheelie bins, surely, for us to save the planet. On a Thursday night with me? Well, you only had to ask, Danny. Get a third helping of Danny Kelly every week from this Thursday. That's the attitude that built the British Empire. The Thursday night sports show with Danny Kelly and Mike Lawrence from this week. On BBC London 94.9. Touch something here, the record sound with. That one? Turn that. Okay. Turn it. Okay. Oh, there it is. There it is. There it is. Some folks say. Climb aboard 0207 2000 or you can text us 0786 200 949. Haunted appliances, letters after your name. Made a look a right fool. That's 
when you call uh, engineers or people in and you've got to have a good head of steam because their appliance or something they installed has gone wrong and they turn up and like in 10 seconds they go, we see what you've done there. Choice. They'll pass the sausage ends up there. It's a choice of food over love. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. We've got a whole bunch of things to get through. I forget the barking up these things works and now oh, we've yeah. got a log jam. We've got the big tone in where? Of course, big tone in where? Big tone. Big tone. But I can, you man. Uh, big tone. Thank you very much indeed for joining us here in the early mornings again. Uh, as yeah. uh, big tone, you're after some letters after your name, aren't you? Anyone yeah. can do that. Uh, because uh, it's, uh, what is the date today, uh, it's Tuesday. No, it's, it's, yeah, it's Tuesday. So every... 18th. Uh, Tuesday 18th. the 18th. There you go. Tuesday, every Tuesday the 18th of October is going to be our uh, honours list. And people can give themselves honours this year, letters after names. So what do you want to do, Tone? Uh, TLS. Tone, the big Tone in words, TLS. What TLS. does that mean? Teller of lame stories. Yeah, yeah, you know, uh, it, <laughs> Mountain Goat was actually actually on TWS she was holding up. Uh, teller of weak stories, but lame oh. stories, it's close enough. We'll, we'll allow that. Uh, TLS, we were ahead of you on that one. Uh, people who may not have been aware of our relationship tone, uh, what, what would you say is the lamest story you ever came on the air with? Oh, um... Uh, I know competition's fierce and your mind is all of a whirl now, but uh, just <laughs> cherry pick one. Murder your darlings. What have you got? Um, when I stood up in the um, antenatal class and they mm. said, my name's Tony and I'm an alcoholic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. He, 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 <laughs> yes. he did, yeah. yeah. And did you hear that two seconds of a bit of befuddlement afterwards? Well, on the yeah. morning he first started, it was a good, what, it was about 35 seconds before the station recovered from it? Definitely, uh, yeah. Tone, to, yeah. you can right. certainly have Big Tone TLS. From now on, reminder, whenever you call up the 1919 year olds out there, uh, whenever you call up the phalanx of uh, people who answer the phones, you are Big Tone TLS. Here comes uh, Bruce on the A40, uh, Good morning, Bruce. Uh, morning, Candyman. Thank you very much indeed, Bruce, for calling us. Now, I like this subject of things uh, that uh, appliances, there's only one reason they act like they do. It's because they're haunted. What have you got for us? Well, uh, we got a house up in Scotland mm. just recently, right up in the Highlands, right in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. And we invited all the locals down, the crofters and people around, the fishermen, yeah. and they all came around for a meal and uh, something to drink. Mm. And they were all saying, "I ah, well, you don't have to lock your house or your door around here. No, no. So uh, they all left um, well oiled, mm. and so I put on the TV, and after the TV finished, mm. I closed the door, yeah. and the doorbell went. Okay, so, so I opened it. Hang on, let me try it. Like that, it's not, it's not like exactly that. Like that, just like that. Okay, so I thought, oh, I know who that is, because I, I know somebody who drinks more than anybody else. So I know who came in, so I looked around, mm. and there was absolutely nobody there. So I thought, oh, I better close the door. And it's a very long way down. I mean, to make an effort to go around, to ring the doorbell, yeah, so this, take you at they, least they, 10 minutes. This is, this is in those second years running around playing knockdown ginger as they used to. This is, this is, there's something going on, right? There's something going on. Okay, there's yeah. something going on. So, so you, I thought, you, yeah. I better lock the door. Mm. I bolted the door. And the next morning I came down, I felt a bit awkward because I thought maybe this one of these crofters doesn't like me, maybe they'll burn me out. <laughs> yeah, but that's what they do, they burn you out or they burn effigies on your lawn, they don't knock on the door and run yeah. away. That's not a very angry crofter away. in my book. Yeah. No. So, so you... I went down and I was clearing up and there was a lot of mess in the sunroom where the, where the TV was. Mm -hmm. So cleared up the bottles, clanking of bottles, closed the sunroom door. Mm -hmm. And the and the front door bell went off again. Mm. Now now that now your the hair is standing on end on the back of your. Uh, uh. Well, it, it is a knot because when I closed it again, it went off again. So mm. I kind of realised it wasn't the haunted crofter that I thought it might be. It was just a loose connection. No, no, oh, no, 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 no that was the reason. But it may have been the haunted crofter. Glad, yeah, bless you. Now one. you're back on the air again. We need to go cast you out into the <laughs> darkness there. So in total, how many times did the doorbell ring itself? Well, it rings every time I go up there. Mm, yeah, and, and 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 every time it rings, do you, do you tell the company, oh, that's nothing, that's just a loose connection, or do you give it some of this? I give it some of that. That's the doorbell. It is and the doorbell. It, it is the doorbell. And they all go, well, shouldn't you answer it? Oh, there's no one there. What do you mean there's no one there? We'll go and look. No, don't do this to us, please. Don't do this to me, Tony. Don't frighten me. Oh, I'm not. There it goes again. Why don't you go and see who's there? Tony, stop it. I want to go home. Tony, you're dreadful. Oh, I want more haunted appliances, oh, please. That's freaking me out. It's very, yeah, it's very difficult to be frightened of a doorbell, but our listeners always manage it. Uh, so what, what's there? Oh, well, so this is from Dave and Epping. Mm -hmm. Now, he had one of those small pen lights, uh -huh. and one evening he dropped it on the floor. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the honest truth, according to Dave. Yeah, yeah. A few minutes later, he picked it up, uh -huh. and he put it on the bedside cabinet, Okay. and it started making a high-pitched whistling noise. A whist from a pen? Yes, okay. from a pen uh -huh. light. Mm -hmm. He picked it up again, mm -hmm. and he burnt his hand on it. Why? 
Why? Because it's haunted, Danny. Oh, well, sorry. Yes, I'm sorry. I, for a moment there, I took off my cravat and my smoking jacket. Uh, of course it's haunted. Yes, it is. Uh, here comes Tony in Tower Bridge. He's got another one. Here we go, Tony. What have you got for us, Tony? Oh, no, hang on. I have to fight him up. Where is that you, Tony? Oh, no, the desk's not working. There's only one explanation. I'm an idiot. <laughs> Sorry, Tony. There, there we go. I do. I'd like to say that's the last time it's ever going to happen. You see, yeah. we used to have ranks of people, mm, uh, the whole team, uh, who answered the phones here, Tony, and then would uh, you know make sure that I could hear people in that. But in order to bring me back to the station, then don't blame me. Blame my very good agent. They've had to lay a few people off. I should feel guilty. I don't. Uh, Tony, what have you got for us? Yeah, hello, Danny. All right. Yes, yeah, it's good to go, Tony. Uh, I've got a, I bought a new smoke alarm. Mm -hmm. It's not just a battery one, it's one of them ones that are called an angel. Have you heard of them? No, I haven't. Tell us what a smoke alarm angel is. What you do, you plug it into your light bucket, mm -hmm. then you put your bulb into it, yeah. and it runs through your bulb. Okay. And uh -huh. I've had it, I switched it on last night, uh -huh. it beeped. Uh -huh. Switched the light off, kept uh -huh. on beeping. Unplugged it, kept on beeping. Uh -huh. No power one, no battery in this one. Uh -huh. Kept so, it, 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 everyone who's got smoke alarms, no, they just go off. They, right, I mean, but this, ain't, this ain't a battery one, though, Danny. It doesn't put battery on, no. A small wisp of smoke three districts away. Do, 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 off goes your smoke alarm. They're very sensitive. Now, is there nothing else this could have been? Well, I don't know, but I ended up drowning it. <laughs> well, tell us about that. Oh, tell, yeah. us, tell us about so that. It, it kept going off, and yeah. I wanted to go to bed. It's 2 o'clock in the morning, so I sink up and threw it in the sink. <laughs> <laughs> and did it still keep going from beneath the watery well, depths? I, I don't know. When I woke up this morning, there was no water in the sink. Just, whoa. Oh, there but we the, go. Was there a noise like... <laughs> No, As it tried, with the last right. gasping breath of its electronic body. But in, in, in my kitchen, I've got an effigy of uh, Jesus' face where my old skirting pool just Oh, I, that's uh -huh. the thing, and I say, once once you do uh, achieve some kind of blaze in your own home, uh, once you do get that, and you'll come down and this farmer and say, I've never seen anything like this, come in here. And it will just have written in smoke, we live. <laughs> we live. What are the haunted appliances out there? What's that over there, Bailin? Okay, so this is this is from Paul in Swanley. He says, mm -hmm. uh, me and two mates uh, were in a house off East Street back in 86. Okay, yeah. Now, the electric, they were squatting. The electric supply was a bit iffy, to say the least. But everything worked. So in the kitchen, they had a kettle. Uh -huh. They had an infrared pre-George Foreman grill thingy. Okay. Uh -huh. And nothing else. Uh -huh. So they're in there making something to eat. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly, a spark flew off the grill. All right. Uh -huh. It hit the kettle. And it blew a hole into it. All right. An eighth of an inch from the base. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there they are. They're watching the water pour out of the kettle onto the floor, mm -hmm. inching ever closer to the grill. Oh, it's about oh, right. six yeah, inches yeah. away okay. at this point. Uh -huh. So uh, Paul runs off to the fuse box, and he turns it off. Uh -huh. Everything goes off. Total darkness, except for the red light on the grill. There you go. It stayed on, even when it was unplugged from the wall. That's it. See, the, see people have said it can't happen. Your mouse cannot have a light on it when it's unplugged. And it was on as he threw it out the window. Only one empty. Haunted appliances. Haunted. And people, people. I'm, I'm no great. I have no. I have no great faith. Uh, and I'm certainly. Uh, I'm not a reincarnation nut. No, they're not nuts. Are they reincarnation? They're Buddhists. That's, that's the one. Right. Yes. Yes. That's right. I do apologise. The entire face. No, the it Scientologists. Faith, is it? They're, 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 it? Anyway, I think people come back as toasters and stuff, and that's why they're being mean to us. So we're doing more of those, please. Oh two oh seven two two four two thousand. If you want three letters after your name, we'll keep this open all week. You can uh, text us. Oh double seven eight six two hundred nine four nine. Give us the three letters you want, like O B E after your name, and tell us what they stand for and indeed why and i tell you what having played that record i don't want love because the fellow wants to carry on eating have yeah. you ever given up anything for love or indeed the chance of easy sex but you, you chose something else over it oh look at Bateman. how long have you got those eyebrows i say <laughs> instead of uh, you know you could have had a chance of let's call it love or it may be a one night stand but instead you chose something else what takes the place of mere gratification of the flesh dr feel good <laughs> I love the Dr. Phil good. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Find out the time. Hang on, what's the time? Oh, hold on. Where are we? It's on the, it's on the first sheet. Uh, yesterday we gave away all the times to people, and it's on the first sheet here somewhere. Uh, no, that's the four o'clock sheet. I'm like, I got it. You want it? You got it? Oh, yeah, you got it. What, what is the time? It's Danny in North Harrow. There you go. That's it. Now, now don't you feel a fool yesterday for not ringing in and then claiming one of the minutes, the 120 minutes. It's uh, going to sting every day, isn't every it? Every day. They're gonna, it's going to be like the clock, the, the, the time passing on and laughing. <laughs> the arrogance of chronology is what it's going to be like. Here comes uh, Sharon in Sutton. She wants some uh, letters after her name, so I'll change my music. Good, good afternoon, Sharon. Good afternoon, Danny. Well, good morning, if you like. I'm learning to say both, which is, a, you know, pretty uh, a big advance for me, so here we go. Let's put this behind you. And what do you want? What letters do you want after your name there, Sharon? Well, I'd like, um, for my mum, 
Mum, mm. I'd like um, CBQ. CBQ. CBQ, yeah. Before you carry on here, you might have noticed I'm getting more uh, fluent at leaving people talk, you know, on the air. I can bring them on quite quickly now and all of that. And the only way I know how to do that, and this, I'm sorry to drag you down into all this, Sharon, is push all these buttons up in front of me and by process of elimination bring them down until her voice starts fading. Think that's her. <laughs> so, DJ does, of the year. If it does dip a bit, then that's what I'm doing. So why, why is your mother CBQ? She's the carrier bag queen. Oh, oh why wasn't right, I of ahead of that? Again, just for uh, new listeners, and I understand that there are dozens uh, new listeners, tell us why your mother is the carrier bag queen. Because she makes bags does she? out of carrier bags. Does she? Does she ever? Did you ever see those bags? I did, yes. They're lovely, weaved delights. When we did our, um, uh, and it still stands in the uh, Broadcasting Hall of Fame, when we did our six hours, two separate shows on nothing but carrier bags, and the theme shows are going to return soon, once we got over being so pleased with ourselves for being back, uh, we did it all on carrier bags, and nothing staggered us like when Sharon called in and said, my mum makes carrier bags, uh, makes bags out of carrier bags. And she said, to be honest with you, Sharon, when you said, I'll send you some, we thought, Oh, yeah, all right, go on then. Yes, you'll send it. And when they turned up, there was fist fights outside because they were so fantastic. Were uh, Shirley Abigail, no, no, not Shirley Abigail, Tracy Emin, uh, ever <laughs> to, to, to exhibit these, then, well, wouldn't there be a fuss then? But your mother is certainly CBQ, absolutely. What's your mother's full name? Her name's Betty. Betty what, though? Betty Strainey. How do you spell that? S-T-R-A-N-E-Y. Strainey? Strainey. Strainey. Strain is a funny name, isn't it? It is a funny name. I'm <laughs> obviously, I had to get rid of it. There's no, there's no. Oh, you, of course, you, you were Sharon Strainy. You see, uh, uh, we, won't, we won't say we won't linger on this, but I used to know a Belinda Mould. Her name was mm. Belinda Mould. There's someone who couldn't wait to get married either. And and uh, my wife's very good friend is is is, is Linda Meany. Uh, but but Sharon Strainy, that was no bargain. That was a that you laboured under that for a while. Although the yeah. CBQ helps it. The CBQ does lift it. Yes, yeah, it does. It right up. <laughs> Thank you very much, Sharon. And of course, your mother Betty Strainy. Oh, but you didn't ask what, me what, what my one was. Oh, you want two oh, thoughts? Wow. Oh, I just thought you were, you know, just saying, Mother, please, I do this for you. But if you've got one as well, go play ahead. What have you got? Well, you can choose which one. Mm -hmm. It's either R E D. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be three then, is it? Yeah, rings, go every day. Yeah. rings every day. Rings every day. Oh, no. There's going to be fierce competition for that. R E D, yeah. I'm worried, though, Sharon, that, that it'll be read as Sharon Strainy Red. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not strainy anymore. No, you're not. Oh, no. Right. No, she changed her name to Pox. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> and uh, what's the other? What's the other alternative? Oh, it could be called too soon. C T S. No, I like. I like. I like the first one. I'm already -E that. No, her name's not strainy anymore. Okay. Uh, Balin. <laughs> I'm now known as Sharon in Sutton. Sharon in Sutton. Well, uh, 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 that will work perfectly. Sharon in Sutton. R E D. Red. R -E -D. Here comes Phil in the high wickham. Good morning, Phil. Thank you very much. Good morning, well. Danny. How are you? Oh, hats on the side of the head, as we used to say so many years ago. Oh, uh, yeah. What have you got for us, Phil? Right. Well, I. Use my appliance to haunt the family next door. You use what? Ah. And my appliance. Okay, we're doing haunted appliances. Of course we are. I forgot about them for the moment. No, I, I actually down. haunted theirs with uh, my mm. remote control. Okay, how, tell us about that. I think I'm ahead of you, but what appliance is it? It was about 30 years. It was a remote, my remote uh, yeah. control. Yeah, yeah. It was, uh, obviously very powerful mm -hmm. and compatible with the, the guy next door because we lived in a sort of terraced house. Yeah, I've seen. I mean, in the street, I used to live, used to be able to turn over people's uh, television. Yeah. And, and Quite it, good. Is it a television you turn over? Sorry? Is it a television you turn over? Yeah, yeah, we used to turn his TV over. Normally during, you know, when Coronation Street was coming to a critical mass or a Doctor uh -huh. Who or something like that. Yeah. And you could hear him sort of screaming and shouting, you know, and getting a bit upset about it all. And, and didn't this uh, simple-minded fool ever, uh, you know, come to realise what it, what it was? No, no, because it was haunted, obviously. There is that, okay. yeah. Suppose, but, you know, I mean, uh, there is that worry that when you use when you use your haunting for bad, <laughs> that it comes back to you threefold. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, this, this, is, this is pretend, this is like the ghost train, it's not a real haunting. Haunted appliance. What do you mean? Uh, uh, until uh, one day, uh, when uh, I, I suspect Phil didn't you use it one day, and it, it backfired on you. And after that, over the next three to thirty years, all of his teeth fell out. Well, uh, no, it sort of uh, it did actually make him go bald. I think. Did it? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I, I think you, you aimed it at me once. <laughs> I, I wish there was a remote control yeah. that made people go bald. Oh, wouldn't yeah. that be? Were well, instantly bald as yeah. well. I mean, you can only use it once, and I don't know what benefit it would be to society. But yeah. if can I be POD? Could just just. Uh, I think this is a crackerjack idea you stumbled.
stumble on here because in the now, uh, and quite rightly in some cases, I suspect, the nuclear proliferation has died out. <laughs> and nations have said, we've got no weapons of mass destruction. Oh, we but have. We have got a ray to make you all go bald. <laughs> yeah. That, you know, it's a macho thing, uh, in, in, in war. It's a macho thing. It and is. I think it would appeal to them if they said, well, we don't care if, if, if millions die. I'm willing to die for my country. Are you willing to go bold for your country? Yeah, have a care, sir. Have a care. Take our land, they would say. That would be a terrific thing, a ray that made you go bold. Uh, so what letters do you want there, Phil? P.O.D. Post, uh, poet of Distinction. Are you a poet of distinction? Uh, well, I'm the plank. So I, I sent in the limerick about the uh, King of Tonga's tortoise. Oh, man, just give it to us one more time. Ladies and gentlemen, this was uh, uh, one of our free-for-all Fridays when I gave impossible opening lines to limericks and asked for people to continue them, and it was, The King of Tonga's tortoise, and you continued it, con uh, continued it how? Uh, had a face like old Cole Porter's. It wouldn't be bad, but the face what he had, he passed down to his sons and his daughters. Look at that! I mean, that is an, that's an original work. It is. Not only has he come up with a, a, a weapon of mass boldness, but he is the limerick king. So what do you... What, uh, you've got to put that L in there, actually, haven't you? Uh, oh, that plot? The, no, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, not yeah. going to work out for him. <laughs> <laughs> It's not going to be that. Thank you very much indeed, my friend. of distinction, well, indeed. Uh, well, we are after uh, uh, haunted things generally, please. Yeah. Uh, haunted... Uh, thank All you. Right. Oh, yes, I have to fade that down again, don't I? OK, so we are... Uh, uh, after uh, haunted appliances, we're after. What have you given up for love? Uh, did you have a choice once? You could have. Let's, let's face it, easy sex. But you went another route. You went for a good meal or something because that's what was suggested in the song I just played. Any of those you've got, and we are after three letters you wish to continue after your name. Do you know it's uh, Sammy Davis's birthday? But here's Frank Sinatra. Make like Mr. Milk Toast, you'll get shut out. I'll give you the whole Magilla. Paul McGillar like in a one-word speech. Wow, that, that, that's haunted. Uh, covers everything today, that does. Uh, by the way, those, um, those people who have been calling saying, how do we get tickets for the uh, Christmas Eve show at the ice rink over at, uh, as I said yesterday. They're going to have an ice wall as well this year. An ice wall, yes, yeah. they are. And if you want to call during John O's show tomorrow and speak to the people there, they will give you the uh, correct number. Same number as here, but uh, it's only up until 9 o'clock in the morning. All right, let's try this. And can I get two in a row here? Let's try this. Here we go. Yes. Yeah. You're listening to London's radio station. Danny Baker on BBC London 94.9. Good afternoon, everyone. Some extremely useful material in the first part about uh, people who can only put down the behaviour of inanimate objects to the fact they're probably haunted. And uh, we're after, you know, your, your toasters and uh, uh, various things around the house. You think, well, there's only one reason for that. It must be haunted. That's because uh, the mouse of my computer, even when it's unplugged, still now has its little blue light on. I'm surprised it, it that you keep it in your home. Well, I mean, you're a brave man. It is. Well, actually, it is something. It uh, is. I'll throw it back, but I, I, I throw it out. But I've got an idea. It would snake its way back. Oh, to it me. would. It would. It would be well, there again the next morning. Uh, you re it? remember my mom's uh, haunted pepper shaker set? Tell us about that. I've forgotten about that. Yes. yes well, it, it was actually my mom's friend Judy. Uh -huh. uh, they went to garage sales. That was their big thing, car boot sales, and uh, collected salt and pepper shaker mm -hmm. sets. My mom still collects salt okay. and pepper shaker sets. Mm -hmm. So uh, she was very upset because Judy saw the cow salt and pepper shaker set before she did. Yes. So she got it and she took it home. Proud as punch. And then later that night, she called my mom and she said, Did you notice if the pepper was bigger than the salt? Uh -huh. uh, no. We go over. The pepper cow has grown mm. twice the size of the salt cow. In the journey home. In the journey home. So it sat there on the shelf beside a Dewey. That's her husband. He was asleep. Yeah. So it sat there. And then over the course of the next few days, uh -huh. it continues to grow. Uh -huh. And then it starts leaking a milk-like substance from its pores. Which, uh, upon analysis, turned out to be milk. Well, exactly. It is. After some experts <laughs> got in, it turned out to they be found milk. found a Dewey. So, uh, yeah. A little amiss with his jug. Milk, and he was a bit, actually. Yeah, but yeah. they did end up, uh, she consulted a witch doctor from the hills, oh, okay. and they ended up burying it with the hair of something in I, the I'm, backyard. I'm handling the story awfully well, don't you think, with the witch doctors and the Adui's and the, and the swelling cow. The mountain witch boy. It's uh, all true. Know, I saw it with let my own it eyes. roll over you, that's what I say. But uh, anyone who's uh, been a long-time listener of Balin's, no, this sort of stuff is like breathing in and breathing out for him. We are after that. We're after, do you want to give yourself three letters after your name? Henceforth on the show, whenever we refer to you or you call in, you can say, uh, you know, it's...
it's uh, uh, Glenda here. Uh, www Wicked Witch of the West. <laughs> Whatever you want to be. It doesn't have to be pertinent. It doesn't have to be wacky. It doesn't have to be. Oh, ironic. I wish Glenda would call up. Oh, you know enough. And uh, so there'll be, I'm sure you can dial a few to get a call. Anyway, so uh, we just need you to call us. We want three letters after your name. And here's a tricky one. Have you ever been in a position whereby you want a sure thing? Or perhaps you were just in love, but you chose something else over that love? I could go out tonight. I could. Hmm. Let's not be coy. Go to bed tonight. You chose something else over easy sex. What was it? We've already heard a song today that said food is always good. What you got there, Balaam? Oh, this is Beverly in Wallington. Uh-huh. Uh, she wants ah, BBT dear, after her name. Being what? Uh, Beverly Baby Tooth. Yes, she has tiny teeth. So Beverly teeth. BBT. She has tiny teeth, like, uh, what's her name? The actress I always forget the name of, who's got little tiny teeth. Nicole oh, Kidman. Oh, Nicole Kidman, Nicole yes. Kidman, the baby teeth. Baby teeth. Milk teeth, I think they're called. It, little fish teeth. That's what the mountain goat, thank you, mountain goat. It's always the fish teeth. They are. They're like little but little grains of uh, Uncle Ben's rice thrown haphazardly into her gum. And they, I bet they give you a little nip. Chomp, chomp, Let's go to uh, Danny in Blackfriars. Good morning, Danny. Hello, Danny. Hello, Balin. How are you? Hello, Danny. No, 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 you're Balin over here. By the way, and here's the fact, Jack, and this is an absolute world exclusive. This uh, project I've been writing over the summer, my screenplay, uh, my, uh, yeah, my, the char- lead character's name? Balin. Oh, yeah. Is it? It's Balin. Yes, it is. I couldn't find... <laughs> oh, no. and let's not be, I couldn't find a name that was both absurd and believable. And so Balin, the lead character's name, is Balin. Oh, I'm honoured. Look out for it at a cinema near you. Uh, Danny, what have you got for us, Danny? I used to have a haunted taxi. Okay, go on, a haunted taxi. This is a, 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 a brand new taxi, I bought it. Mm-hmm. First time I got a job out, I'd been driving for long, so mm-hmm. I was a bit nervous, and mm-hmm. I got a job out to Heathrow. Mm-hmm. And uh, as I accelerated, as I came off the uh, elevated section, yeah. I took me for an accelerator, and it wouldn't stop. It just going faster and faster. Oh, this is and I had a woman in the back, so I was whacking the brakes. Oh, yeah? And uh, I could, she, she actually leant forward and said, I can smell burning. Uh. I'm thinking on my feet, and I said, oh, I think a bit of plastic bag's got caught an exhaust. And I was terrified, because <laughs> we, we were approaching, you know, I was doing all that, oh, I've dropped my pen. Yeah. Leading down, I was pulling on the pedal, pulling the And what kind of speed were you doing? Well, we were up to about 60 miles an hour. Yeah. And then I just had to have three foot constantly on the brake. Yeah. And uh, put it into neutral, and the engine was screaming. Yeah. And eventually it came off, and I went back to the main dealer, they explained it, and they all nodded, nanny, and said, oh, you know, you know, it's your main grommet or whatever, and they sprayed yeah, it, oh, it, oh, 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 no, no, that's, 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 notice how this won't play the like second time. Won't and it had, kept on happening, it happened about three yeah. or four times. Uh huh. And, I picked up a Chinese man, and he told me but that. But how did you. How, so, not that. How did you. How did you. How did you uh, stop it in the end? He did, he just stopped itself. Just I mean, well, eventually, it was repossessed by a one-footed bailiff, so... <laughs> so, so this wasn't possessed, it was repossessed. Repossessed. <laughs> and when you say so, the phrase one-footed bailiff, you fascinate me strangely. What do you mean? Well, he was an ex-motorcycle policeman mm. who'd mm. had an accident mm. uh, and lost his foot, so that's why he became a bailiff. Mm. But then, spookily, he told me a story that they were sent to uh, Hong this, Kong. This is all great. Now, hang on, hang on. Let's get a rope around this story. Is a car, we've, we've gone over that, the fact it turned into Chris and try to, you know, uh, go over the beachy head at a thousand miles an hour. We've got past that. It has now come to be repossessed by uh, a one-foot bailiff. And I thought we meant a tiny little bailiff. But now it turns out that the uh, ex-policeman lost it, and uh, now he's come to repossess your taxi. What about him? He went, he telling me a story while I was getting my papers together that he, he was sent to Hong Kong uh. to repossess a Rolls Royce. Uh. And they couldn't sell it because it was green. Uh. And then I thought that was a sp- spooky. But I must admit, it did freak me out because I, I became so convinced it was haunted that, mm. that the passengers could read my mind. You, oh, oh, now we've got somewhere. I was just about to wrap a call up again and he's gone again. They could read that, your mind. You remember that film where those, the uh, villagers are down with those kids? Oh, the villagers. Uh-huh. I'm trying to find the music. I've got the music here somewhere. It spooks oh, right. Everyone out, but I'll try and find it in the next uh, 45 minutes. But uh, so the Esther film village of the dam. What about it? Well, we know about the last scene where the man plants the bomb. He's going to kill all the kids. Absolutely, yeah. And to yeah. stop them reading his mind, yeah. he thinks of a brick wall. Mm, mm. And that's, that's what I would have to do. You'd think. I would think, ah, oh. and they'd do things like they'd make my nose itch, and if I scratched it, mm. they'd know that I'd know mm. that they was reading my mind. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. If you didn't used to listen in the uh, mornings, or you've not heard this show before, you, it, this, this, I mean, it's, it's P for the C, par for the course, although particularly uh, uh, bizarre, that one, that went through the one-foot bailiff, into they can read his mind, and he sort of brick walls as he went around London. But the res of the story is the fact that he had a haunted taxi. Now, we've had the taxis, we've had the, t- the TV, we've had the, uh, the My Mouse, we've had several so far of inanimate objects that the only reason for their behaviour is they're haunted, they are possessed. 0207 224 2000. 
you just want to ring up and give yourself three letters after your name, the number's the same, you can text us 07786200949, and also, and I'm, I'm determined to get one of these, you could have had a really erotic night, a night of love, you know, and deep passion, but you chose to do something else, ever had to make a choice between the pleasures of the flesh and pleasures of other kinds. <laughs> Evandando, I love this record. Love this record. I can't for the life of me tell you what all this is really about. The uh, last Evan Dando album, I think there was only one, after he uh, clean, got himself clean, as they say, and then uh, made a record about uh, 18 months ago, and that's all good. Sounds exactly like the Lemonheads, which is all we ask of our Evan Dandos. Uh, Balin, what is it you telling us? You saw Charlie Chaplin's uh, grandson, and he said the greatest thing in the... What was this? Oh, saw? yeah, it was his great-grandson, James Terry, was mm. his name. Mm. And because, you know, that whole family still c- carry on that tradition of miming and, yeah, and good, circus good. and all that yeah. stuff. So he was at the Peacock Theatre for two weeks, and yeah. I saw it over the weekend. Best thing I've ever seen. Well, best thing I've I've seen probably in three or four years. What is, he, what, is he doing? what is he doing? Well, there's a bit. It's, it's a five of them, and there was a bit of mime. There was a bit of circus skills. Mm-hmm. That it was mystical. It was magical. It was one of those things you walk away from, and you wish you could live in that world forever. Did the chicken have big, large talons? Does the chicken have large talons? I don't know why I'm saying that. I don't either. <laughs> that's haunting me. It's a Napoleon Dynamite, that's all. He oh, that's skills oh. a lot. Does the chicken have large talons? Rock! Is the defect in the first one bleach? Yes, it is. Yes! Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we're looking for haunted appliances. Just on your Charlie Chaplin thing there. Yeah. Uh, and you'll be seeing it at Christmas. Uh, and I don't want to bad mouth work here, but uh, 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 as you can imagine, I don't want to get highfalutin, but you know, the. the but you invi- are, so go ahead. Yeah, the, the invites that come through to take part in these 50 greatest programs all the time, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, those programs. Uh, but this uh, particular one comes through, and they said, look, you know, as you have to these days, the huge preamble in front of it. This is not one of those, it sounds like it, but it's the 50 greatest comedy films we've already interviewed. Steve Martin, they get that in. Yeah. So you think, oh, okay. And it's going to be with Channel 4 at Christmas. Would you take part in it? Because we can't find people to uh, talk about the pre-1950 classics in, in Britain, you know. Okay, so it's a sure. It's been, uh, I think Stephen Fry's lined up to present it, and it's going to be a big show at Christmas. So I said, sure. Uh, okay. And then, you know, I forget about it. And about six weeks later, they said, you know, like they usually do to me. You know, that's tomorrow morning, that thing you'd be great to do. Oh, is it? Right, okay. Uh, they sent the list around of the uh, films. You can look at them and talk about any of these you want. Mm, okay. 50 greatest comedy films of all time. How many films were from, let's say, 1920 to 1950 in the list? Oh, probably three, if that. Lower. One. One. And was it a Charlie Chaplin one? No, it wasn't. It was Duck Soup. There were no Chaplin, no Keaton, no Preston Sturgis, no W.C. Fields, not even Jerry Lewis, no Bob Hope, nothing like that. And yet, it, in the list, it's a school of rock made it, the Blues Brothers made it, oh yeah, uh, Four Weddings and a Funeral, and Notting Hill made it. The 50 oh. greatest comedies of all time. How many were from the, uh, you know, you know. And how many are you choosing to talk about? I, I, I tried to pull out of it, but I went along then. I just gave my usual speech about the uh, the nonsense that people speak, you know, when they try to say that uh, this is all about uh, uh, these films. Uh, could you, could you, W.C. Fields, he was ahead of his time. No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. He was of his time. People weren't dumb then. He was a huge star. Every film he made, made millions. Number one at the box office. It's now, I think, when we have Sex Lives of the Potato Men, we may be of our time, and therein lies the tragedy. But can you believe that? One film. So did you rant about it? For no, I didn't. No, no, they were good. No, nice people. And it would be a good show, I'm sure. But there was nothing I could bring to the table there. No Buster Keaton. No Chaplin. No, no, uh, only one Miles Brothers, anyway. No W.C. Fields. No Preston Sturgis. No Cary Grant. Nothing from that period. Yeah, and I said, well, you know, is the it's a younger audience demographic. It's a very short can memory we have now. Can you imagine? Here's Johnny Neeling to cheer me up. Good morning, John. How are you, John? Good morning. Yeah, good morning, uh, John. Right have you back, Dan? Thank you very much indeed. It's nice to be back. And it hasn't okay, taken me long to curdle, has it? Uh, so, uh, <laughs> John, what have you got for us? Uh, well, Haunted Radio, if you, if you Oh, want. okay, yeah. I'd love to hear uh, about a Haunted Radio. Go on. And uh, as a stopgap, hmm. when my stereo went wrong, I bought this thing from... Uh, 
The old slam shop. Mm -hmm. it, it cost about ten quid, I think it was. Okay, go on. It was an Amstrad thing, and uh, it was a record deck, mm -hmm. uh, twin cassette deck, but the twin cassette decks didn't work. No, no, no. Uh, well, the twin cassette decks, they'll come roaring, you know, the, the cassette, the old cassette boxes and all that, couldn't be more sheesh. My son says, have you got any of those old cassettes? They love the original boxes they come in, those Memorexes and Sony mm. boxes. You've got to have those old... What about an 8-track? No, an 8-track, no, 8-tracks have gone past that now. <laughs> that, yeah, that, that's too antique. Oh, but, uh, okay. Anyway, so there you is, you've got one of those, what yeah, about I've got it? I've got one of those, and uh, mm -hmm. one day, when I was uh, tuning on the medium wave, I was mm -hmm. looking for Arrow Rock. Okay. Oh, and, uh, uh, yeah, okay. Uh -huh. all of a sudden, come blasting over the radio, mm -hmm. like someone's phone conversation. Oh. And right, okay. if you left it on this place, you get loads of conversations from, from all around about where I live. Yeah. You know, I spoke to a telecom engineer. Not, not, through, not through the radio. Yeah, coming out the radio. But no, you didn't talk into the radio and they could hear you. Oh, no, they could. God, that's, my, li you. that's my living nightmare. I could hear a two-way <laughs> conversation on you, the radio. You could just pick up ordinary conversations? Yeah. No, come on. Clear, that, clear as a bell, honestly. Not, not phone. These weren't mobile phone things you were picking up. No, no well, I, I, uh... The telecom guy said, ah, oh, it's these uh, wireless uh, handsets, you know, where you walk around the house. Yeah. You're picking up those. Yeah, but uh, were these normal private conversations? Because we're onto something here. If you yeah, are channeling... private conversations, and you'd be amazed what you can hear about your local people. <laughs> but, 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 if I'm parlaying this up into a screenplay, you should have had it turned on, and then all of a sudden you, hit, you hear somebody say, I didn't think the old man would bleed so much. And, and, and uh, what, what number do you live at? Just give us your door number. Eleven. Mm -hmm. Sounds bad already, doesn't yeah, it? it? Does. And then you can hear him saying, "The guy at eleven, he knows, he's listening." Yeah, well, hey, uh, hey, you, away. John, Ealing, I'm in your house <laughs> right now. Oh, Sorry. you're picking no. up uh, wireless handsets that yeah. you walk around the house with. And yet you try and pick up, you know, Pete and Jeff on Virgin. You couldn't do it, could you? <laughs> that, 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 that's, that, that's what you call dead. <laughs> yeah, there's more to it than that, though, because yeah. we, uh, when I found out someone I, I was picking up, yeah. and I said. Have you got, um, you know, a, a wireless handset you walk around the house with? Yeah. He said, no. Why would you ask that? I said, oh, I was just wondering. I was thinking of getting one. Uh -huh. I thought, well, he hasn't got one. He's getting this down, down the line on the phone socket. Uh -huh. uh, what, what, OK, well, let's, let's leave it there before, you know... Uh, before telecom, telecom guy said it's not possible. It is impossible, but, and yet you heard it happened. Private conversations, yeah. that's exactly what we're after. We're looking for uh, the haunted world of uh, the, uh, domestic appliances, and that well, may be the best yet. No, it wasn't the best no, delivered yet, but no, no, that's, that's, there's plenty there. Yeah, we are after those. 0207 2000 By the way, uh, you know, I know the school runs on there, and people may say, well, what's easy sex then? So let's say love instead, right? Yeah, easy yeah. love. Easy, no, not easy love. <laughs> <laughs> the word easy welded onto its <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> the choice he once had to make, and no more blow cleaning going. Well, the football was on. Let's be a little more. Let's 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 look up, not down. Man, another another boy. Right? Country music with all the fixings, ain't it? It sure is. With all the trimmings. <laughs> there are. <laughs> you want to get an air ticket straight back to Tennessee, don't you, when you hear that? I've got to tell you his, but I've forgotten. And I've, got, I've burned it on a CD, and I can't remember who that is. It's just a good old girl. Yeah, so, so it's that, uh, you know. Throw a rock into HMV's country department, you'll hit a record like that. There's no problem there, is there? Uh, oh, yeah, uh, just on, on this, because, uh, yeah, you know, the, the, uh, uh, the idea of these 50 greatest films. There's only one film from the 1950s, by the way. Uh, Which one's that? Well, I can't tell you. I've probably written on a contract. I'm not I don't really surprise. Anyway. Exactly. But it's one from the 1950s, a couple from the 60s. Otherwise, it was all films from the 1980s, which uh, I think is generally a bastion of comedy. being Hollywood's golden age. <laughs> uh, I think Sister Act is like number three or something. <laughs> but nothing you at all. can't argue that. Nothing at all from yeah. the 20s, 30s, 40s and 50s. They laboured in vain. They were ahead of their time, these people. Wow. Uh, we've got this here from Bob the Bin Man who says, uh, uh, did he get 4.44 on the clock? Yes, he did. Oh, Mr. Port on it? No. Where's that fire? Oh, these are all Will Hay films. No Will Hay films. No British, I mean, British comedies on there at all. You know, nothing at all. Uh, way out where Smart Brothers nothing he's got Notting Hill are you sure yes it's on there as one of the greatest comedies ever made I gave them all of this and then they they pretended they, they humoured me by pretending they had film in the camera while I was giving it all that. <laughs> yeah. I don't think it would have been helpful to the project what have you got over there Valen what is that oh well this is from me somewhere in East London now uh -huh. this is why they're me because uh, they want uh -huh. they're supposed to be 
working and they're listening in secret. Okay, that's good. And so that's they good. would more, like. I think the more secret listeners we get, the better. That is good. Well, this is what they're suggesting that that instead of, you've got Copper Committee, you've got Platinum Club. I'm gonna what about the Discreet Club? That's not a bad thing. No that's real names, no locations. Yeah, the floorboard. Uh, what is an F alliterative thing that it comes out? Some group or something. A floorboard fan base, maybe. Floor, we'll, work we'll work on it. We'll What's going to happen? We're going to get our feet down under the table for the first week or so. Yes. And then we're going to. Uh, the, the Platinum Club and all that remains. But then we are going to launch a brand new afternoon committee. It may be the Five O'Clock Club because I've got the music today. You don't remember the five. You wouldn't remember. No, the but you can educate me. Uh, so they want SMS, secret mail sender, mm -hmm. after their name uh, because they also have to give an alias and a false address really? and loads of disguises. <laughs> but, you know, I'm thinking, you know, it's great that they're listening now, but they can always, you know, we well, archive I'd, this I'd stuff. Like it's this. online. I'd like this. Uh, it's it's 27 after 16. I don't know who's got that. Oh, hold on. I'll tell you. Uh, 27 after 27 16. 27 after 16. Uh, it's I read what is in front of me. It's 27 after 16. <laughs> Jeremy in St. John's Wood. Okay, so that's what that's the time at the moment. Yes. But in the last half hour of the show, I want to try and achieve uh, 10 people who are goofing off listening to the program. Oh, Just okay. ring us up. You, you don't have to ring us up. You can uh, text us on 0 uh, 7 uh, You've got to ring. The, the texts are down, are they? Mountain Goat wants you to ring. Yeah, we want conversations then. Yeah, they're okay. From the corner of the mouth where you say, yeah. do me a favor, don't keep me on the phone now. I'm actually supposed to be in a conference at the moment, and I'm nodding, but I've got, I've got, I've got little headphones on, and I'm listening to the program. And all we want are ten of those, please, in the last half an hour. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be as dramatic as that. If you're supposed to be doing something else, but you're simply goofing off right now, 0207 224 Of course we'll put you on the air, uh, but it, it, you just need the proof of the pudding. Quick one over there. So Bob Rogers wants to be a WVD. What does that mean? White van driver. Yes, it can be. It doesn't have to make sense, any of these. You can be as poetic as you like. You can call yourself KOP, King of Persia, if you like. Although Mountain Goat suggested CDB well. could, could do better. <laughs> <laughs> you see, we're inspiring the wrath of the goats. Exactly. You really don't have Already. To, sooner or later, we're only on the second day in and out has popped the cloven hoof and nobody wants that. And if I do this, I do believe the news will be there. Hang on. Oh, no. White, white. What? White, white. white, white. white, white. white, white. I had to go through green to get to white, dear. Please don't know. On 94.9 FM, BBC London. And here I am with the headlines. I'm Lisa O'Sullivan. That's the summary. There'll be a full bulletin at five. BBC London, 94.9 FM. No? Well, which one then? Which one? Which one? If it's, if it's not that. Which one if not that? No, stop it. There, stop it. Yeah. Well, what, what's that does, doesn't it? It's only Pip. What is it fanfare for Pip? Is he Pip? Go on, Pip. That's it. There you go. Oh. This is BBC London. Do it a cappella if you want. Uh, the weather, bright spells at the moment. The Sparks, BBC London, 94.9. The next travel and weather at quarter to five. Pip, you just, just, just to uh, underline this, I mean, uh, uh, you, you, uh, we, we apologise, of course, because, uh, you know, it, it's one one thing to be brought on the air ragged, but I did burst out and say it's only Pip, and you know I don't mean that. <laughs> you know, I didn't mean that. I don't know people are waiting for their travel out. I don't want to, but what it is, it's Monica's birthday tomorrow, oh, and, she was, she? Yeah, and, and she's in charge of all this. nothing to do with me. She does like to celebrate early, doesn't well, she? Well, she was telling she was giving out invites, dear. Yes. Invites are <laughs> left, right and centre, except to Balin, it turns out, but I do apologise for the bursting out of the phrase, it's only Pip. That's not what I meant. You know how I meant that, don't you? Let's You're do listening to London. London's radio station. Well, they said the show wouldn't last, and look, we've made it to day two already. Weekday mornings from six. Hey, Lynn, no offence, the Christmas is coming, you know. <laughs> when are you going to get the... My story, my story, and I said, oh, do you still love me? And he went, no. News and entertainment from the BBC. Ladies and gentlemen, Joan Rivers yes. is... Hello, here. good one. We can trace our roots back to maybe 1932. Jono and Joan. Yeah, but, you know, you, your roots, you, you are like one of the founding fathers of America, as far as I'm concerned. Thank Joan. you. Very well. well, I did date Abraham Lincoln. That's true. I John O'Coleman and Joanne Good. Weekday mornings from 6 on BBC London 94.9. This is uh, this is something here. We're, we're, we're trying to. Uh, uh, good afternoon, everyone. We're trying to uh, find out if people, you know, can control their treacherous libidos. Uh, this is whether people, you know, uh, can uh, take other things for it. And it says here, this is from Simon in Loughton. He says, I turned down the advances of my wife yesterday, who he loves dearly, by the way. You know, and, and, and I think he's got a healthy libido. But he, he said it was that or a half hour's overtime he could do, <laughs> and he took half hour's overtime as opposed to, you know, uh, pays better. To exactly. So, uh, you know, as delicately as you can work. 
word these, uh, please. We are finding out if, if uh, love is all. Sometimes people will take other things over love, and we're not looking for a transactions here. But then it, look at this. Is the other thing we're doing in uh, haunted um, domestic appliances. Emily and Walthamstow of the cracking jaw, TCJ. She's Emily and Walthamstow, TCJ, the cracking jaw. The clock on the VCR in my dad's house never worked from the day he died until the day of his funeral. I didn't read that. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I thought that was an underwhelming story. The VCR didn't work from the day he died, though, until why on earth the old oh. man would choose to contact the household and say, you know, I'm beyond the veil here through the VCR. You don't always choose your vessel. No, you, you, exactly. You don't always choose it. It's like, uh, do you remember, the, you, you wouldn't know the series that was once called uh, My Mother the Car, would you? No. It's one of the great sitcoms, theme tuned by Sammy Davis Jr. My Mother the Car. Uh, <laughs> that's and, all I can remember. My mother was a but no, yeah, his, mo his mother-in-law, of course, uh, comes back to haunt him and lives through the radio in his car. Mm. It ran for two seasons, American sitcom, My Mother the Car. Here's uh, Erica in Stoke Newington. Good morning, uh, Erica. Good afternoon. Hi, Danny. Thank you very much indeed for calling us, Erica. We are trying to get uh, ten uh, uh, Lazy Boys and Lazy Girls Club. We're supposed to be doing other things, but in fact, are listening to the show. Is that true of you, Erica? It is true. Oh, it bless you, Carl. So, so what's well, this? It was, it, I'm just so excited to have you back. No, well, that's very nice. You know, I don't take these things very well, but uh, it, it's part and parcel of this sort of thing. So what is the circumstances of your listening? Well, um, I should be rewriting my first chapter for my thesis. What thesis is it? Uh, I'm writing on uh, venereal diseases in, in the Indian, uh, in, in 19th century India. Yeah. 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 And how far are we into this? Uh, into the, I've just done the first chapter, and I'm just I have to rewrite it for handing it into my supervisor. We covered those, didn't we, in the first hour? They did most of a lot yeah. of that. But uh, uh, and, and if you've got to, uh, that's not bodhisattva, is it? That's another religion altogether. I think achieving bodhisattva, isn't it? Isn't, is bodhisattva in that? Well, in my thesis. No, yeah, the word bodhisattva. Mm. It's, it's, uh, I think it's the third state of grace you can achieve. I don't think you know your subject at all. Yes. Well, tell the absolute truth. I can include it in my thesis if you like. Stick in the word by the challenge. Abso I'm telling you, because you'll get about two thirds of the way and they'll say, well, this person plainly hasn't goofed off to listen to some light hearted radio. They've got the word bodhisattva down here. Just stick it in on its own. Just say, and of course, this would all come under the banner of bodhisattva. <laughs> because it, it's, it's mixed up in one of those Eastern religions. And believe me, Erica, it's worth it. Uh, well, bless you for doing that, uh, Erica. But you can always use the other great writers thing. And believe me, I've used that. When you're looking out the window, you are working, aren't you? Yes, often. <laughs> That's it. When, you know, when a writer looks out the window, they're working. And I've tried that many times. And when he goes, yeah, all right, could you take the rubbish out? <laughs> 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 Thank you, Erica. A first of our Lazy first. Boys, Lazy Girls Club. Nine to go. I'll tell you what it is, because I've got the music with me. Mountain Goat, this is the Dead Beats Club. It's the <laughs> Dead Beats Club. I've got that with me. I thought, the... I thought my uh, the letters after a name should uh, maybe SSS should be studying. No, it should be studying. We'll have that. Should be yeah. Yeah. SBS. Should be studying. Uh, yeah. Here's Steve in Hertfordshire. Thank you, Erica. Steve, uh, you're the second member of the Dead Beats Club. What should you be doing right now? Hello, Candy Man. Thank you very I much indeed. I should be cutting grass and raking leaves, but I'm sitting on a log, in the true sense of the word, mm -hmm. next to the compost heap. And then just and then and is any governors who could spot you or anything like that? Oh yeah, there's a few. They're in the house. It's, uh, we're not talking about a small house here. It's a, a mm -hmm. fair, fair sized property in Hertfordshire, shall we say? Okay, and, and, and are you getting paid by the hour? Does it matter whether you're doing this or not? Uh, it does really, but mm. every every five minutes I start the lawnmower up and let it run for a couple of minutes. Oh, just there stand by. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> the, that's the leaf blower principle, isn't it? I, I've seen I've seen leaf blowers just standing there reading the Daily Express while having the leaf blower going. Well I done, my friend. Six you, years of practice. You're, I you're, thought, I, I you're thought my, perhaps my letters could be LMM for lawnmower man. No, it's got to be something dead big club, isn't it? It's got to be something. Uh, uh, it's got to be something to do with uh, uh, GFM. Good for nothing. There you go. That'll be Stephen, <laughs> Stephen Hertfordshire, the leaf blower man. Thanks, or Thank you, Steve. There's two members. I didn't think we were going to get any of those. Two members Eight of the Dead Beat Club. I must find that on my list here. You see, uh, all handwritten lists I did of all the music I bring in. Uh, and that, of course, they all swim before me once we're on the air. I'm going to have to start bringing the ones in. I recognize the spines. What's there, Bailey? Oh, this is Des and Slough. Mm -hmm. uh, now, he had a computer printer, uh -huh. which suddenly, and for no apparent reason whatsoever, uh -huh. started printing in Russian. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great thing. Yeah, I bet he bought it you know, down one of the lanes. Yeah. That, is a, that is a real trotter and company thing. And it get it home, and it prints in Russia. He still has a haunted oh. beanbag, though. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, it's the one that spat little beads out across the floor whenever you sat on it. Mm -hmm. I think so I he know. got a new miracle adhesive, mm -hmm. and it now just sits in the corner sulking. Uh, yeah, but that, that's a great thing. A printer that only speaks in uh, Russian. Only in Russian. Uh, and, and, and Does that make it haunted, though? Yes, it does. Or does it just make it... No, but it's a spy. <laughs> yes, it makes it's it a spy. It's, it's, the, it's the Anthony Blunt of the printer world. Uh, here's Nicky in Peckham. Uh, good morning, Nicky. 
Nikki. Oh, good afternoon, Nikki. I'm sorry. That, that'll do it, Nikki. Let me see where you are. Is that you, Nikki? Yes, it's me. That me. Yes, right. No, no, I, I turn up and down several uh, buttons here trying to find you. So, Nikki, what have you got for us? Uh, you've got a haunted appliance too, I understand. Yes, I've had a, uh, an alarm clock haunted by my dad. Oh, all right. Okay. Yeah. Her dad, the alarm clock. My mother, the car. It's the same deal. And how did that work? Well, uh, my dad died, and um, when I was clearing out his house, I took his alarm clock, which he always had by his bed. It was an electronic alarm clock. Mm-hmm. And I brought it back to London. He lives in Cheltenham. And um, mm-hmm. as soon as he got it in through the door, it mm-hmm. started to go off. Oh. And for about a month afterwards, it went off at regular intervals, which made me very happy. Oh, that is good. It, 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 it made me feel like he was talking to me. Well, kind of, kind of. But it was, it was not a little of a, you know, little ookiness about it. I mean, it's, it's nice, of course. And, uh, and, we're, and we cling to what we can in these uncertain ages. Yes. But how long did it take you to make the connection? Oh. Ah, the alarm clock, that'll be dead. Well, it was almost immediately we got in the door because it was quiet in the car on the way home. Yeah. And then it would just go off at regular intervals, you know, the here and there, just to sort of remind us he was around. And then after about a month, it went back to normal. And it's been going like normal ever since. Are you a spiritual person? I'm a very spiritual person, oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, because, I, you know, believe me, they say whatever brings us comfort and all that. But do you not feel that the old man might have actually, you know, physically turned up and said, I'm fine, you know, don't worry for me. Well, I think I was... he would have thought that would have frightened me too much. I think the alarm clock <laughs> so would just he be took, he, took, he, he took the alarm clock I don't off. really want him to sort of jump out at me and say, boo. I think that would have gone a bit That was far. it. So instead, <laughs> we'll always do it. Thank you very much indeed, my friend. Thank uh, you very much. Let, let's play the Deadbeat Club. You're not part of that, but we are putting one together at the moment. This is the B-52. <laughs> Get a job! What for? I'm trying to think. Oh two oh seven two two four two thou If you're supposed to be doing something else now, but just goofing off listening to the radio, we only want ten people, so we need about another eight. seven more, another eight more, another eight more people, just to call us up and say, I'm actually supposed to be working, but. Uh... I was good. I could talk. Truncated we may be, but tamed never. Who has more fun than we do? Why not go in that little radio treehouse? Who knows where we're going to be blown next by the winds of conversation? I'll show Vanessa. Yeah, okay, so there's a B 52s uh this look, hand me that bit of paper every day at the same time. Hand me that bit of paper, the one I've just given you. Hand it back to me, thank you. The magic. And now let's go out and about to see what's happening on the roads. That's the one. Here we go. That's it. On 94.9 FM, this is BBC London. And we'll have a look at the weather first. Uh, the next travel and weather at a minute to five. That's rather sudden. I did it all right. <laughs> is that what you were saying yesterday? You've got to be quick. That's what I was very quick on that. Uh, thank you very much indeed. I did okay there, I think. Oh, and now, oh, now. We're going to have to get used to this, by the way. Oh, but, uh, now, okay. Uh, Hang, on. Hang on. Here we go. Yep. Kath Melandry joins me. <laughs> Tell us what's upcoming on this. Uh, you, Kath, you can take this, as you know. Kath was, uh, as I say, the prototype mountain goat, if she doesn't mind being described, so she knows how things work. And she, yes. you won't mind at all for this upbeat. I know upbeat. what this means. Yeah, I knew that. Yes, you were there when it was invented, I believe. Uh, one day, yes, one you, day I'll get my own music, but uh, I'll borrow this I, I'll, for I'll a while. Find, I will. I'll find you something jaunty and hat on the side of the head. And it, Excellent. Oh, no, I know. I have actually got an instrumental version. Of course I've got this. An instrumental version of Terry Scott's My Brother. Oh. Just oh. really. Oh. Perfect. We've got a show on this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm go- I shall bring that in tomorrow. Anyway, what do you want to tell us? What is it? What is it about? Loads yeah. of things coming up on Drive. I'm going to be telling you about... Well, we're a step closer to knowing who'll be the next leader of the Conservative Party. That'll be news brought to you on Drive Time before 5.30. Oh, you're living up to the music so far. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we want to be asking the question, has your wife got a male friend you don't like? What about you, Dan? What? When got a friend you don't like? No, 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 we're at Liberty Hall right now. We never go out, we never see anyone, you know that. No, we haven't got well, anything. I, 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 do I know, know you know I can't be dragged into these debates. I, I, I try, I try, but so, what we say about the term, I said, actually, yeah, there's one guy, we can't, <laughs> I won't name him. I, I can't do that. I know, I, I, I know. Just, I'm just no good, I don't, it's not, it's not because I disdain to. I know. I have no gear for that. Fair enough. Continue anyway, yeah. Uh, and also we're asking, do you hate your name? Because uh, Digby Milo Jones, is a former soldier, has launched an entire lo- line of merchandise bearing the slogan, I hate my name. Uh, my favourite name. Uh, in general, is Zowie Bowie. Yes. Wow, well, no. No, after the exotic register, we've run around here so I many. know. Uh, James Barty Barty Goldfinch. <laughs> and and Abby, uh, all of those. What? Uh, Diamond is a bogey. You're going to have a Zoe Bowie. He's changed it anyway now. He's not Zoe Bowie anymore. Yes, Joe now. He, uh, he got rid of it. He changed Dumb. it to Joe. Can I tell you about a new story that you'll love? Go on, then. Yes. I'll, 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 okay, go on, it then. contains the words... 
electric fault, uh, uh-huh. explosion, uh-huh. and manhole cover. No, that's someone slightly hurt. That's good, yeah. <laughs> that, 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 yeah? That's not so I bad. don't really need to go through the story. No, you fair. don't. Just got some good sleazy music behind that. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up on the station, we got <laughs> chicks with no tops on and fire. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> that's how to do it. Yeah, that's so, drive time. Yeah, that's it. We Front got five. oil ships <laughs> and fire coming up on the station. We Tune might leave that for the train if that's all right. Tune out if you dare. Oil ships and fire. Okay, so here's, uh, here's Cameron in Guildford. Oh, Cameron's 11. <laughs> oh, no. Good morning, Cameron. How are you doing, Cameron? Hi, what about that show we just invented? Sounds good, huh? What have you got, Cam? Why are you calling us, uh, Cameron? Are you supposed to be doing something else? Yeah, I'm supposed to be doing my homework. Mm. Well, good. Now, tell us about this homework, because as a, as a parent myself of, uh, of several children, uh, uh, the names escape me for the moment, but the, uh, uh, I'd sit down and do homework. I've got to say, it's, it is, whoa, if Uh-oh. that isn't haunted, I'd like to know what is. Uh, what homework is it, Cameron? Oh, listen, oh. listen, 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 listen. It's a, he's turned into a Death Watch beetle. <laughs> Camera, <laughs> and that's oh, no. oh dear. <laughs> <Monaco Rural. laughs> I'm not Cameron, I am the ghost oh, of GLR Candy past. <laughs> uh, sorry, uh, sorry, Cameron, we seem to have lost you there. Me out. Cameron, are you there? Hello? No, that's not Cameron. Let's try the other one. Cameron? You yes, oh. there we are, Cameron. Oh, just back Don't the do break. that to us. In fact, do do that to us. I do, I do apologise, Cameron. Cameron, what, okay. homework, what homework is it? It's in Spanish. I've got to do a plan of my house. Oh, well, can, I, can I help you here? Uh, you, you breeze through this. Uh, uh, luggage is equipaje. Okay. Yeah, there it is. Just put uh, that in there. T- t- Our household is Tortuga. And um, what have you got written down so far? Um, well, I haven't actually started. Oh, oh. come on. Hombre is man. What is house? Come on, what is house generally in Spanish? Uh, I've got it written down in my... No, 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 you're, you're ringing us up to the sky. We're, 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 we're putting this right back at you, young man. Uh, give us at least two Spanish words. Hola. <laughs> Why you go. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and? And me amo Cameron. Well done, me amo Cameron. Now, for a moment there, I thought you were going to fail the whole thing, but you're not. No. And you're good enough to sit around listening to the radio, and you're not just listening to the radio. What have you got in front of you there? Some pogs? <laughs> what is it you're actually uh, doing at the moment? Um, I'm in the car with my dad. Ah, so in, in mm. false. What's the old man? Could you give him the phone for a minute, or is he driving? No, he's driving. No, is he driving? Well, it's the old man who seems to be skiving off. And the best of luck with it. Would you do us a favour? Would you ring us back tomorrow and read us your Spanish homework? Okay. Would you? I mean, I'm serious. I want you to ring us back tomorrow, and we will play some Spanish music behind you, and we'll hear the Spanish homework. How's about that? Okay. That'll be good. Okay. Isn't that sounds yeah, like Manuel? <laughs> okay. Uh, now it's Nick in Worcester Park. Morning, Nick. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you very much for hanging on there. Now, I thought we lost him for a minute. It was, it was, you know, it was all kinds of things going on. What have you got for us, Nick? Well, um. Skiving. Okay, then. Yeah, okay. Part, part of the Dead Beats Club. What should you be doing and what are you doing? I know you're listening well, to that. I've just ripped a bathroom out. Mm-hmm. Um, uh-huh. well, to our unit and um, mm-hmm. I should be um, clearing up, but I'm not. I'm sitting in the van listening to you, Dan. Yeah. Uh, and you're still uh, on wages at the moment, aren't you? Of course I'm on wages. Good man, the fourth yes. member of the Dead Beat Club. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, okay, uh, as a proportion, uh, not as a pie chart, but just as a, as a, as a proportion of 100% here, how much of your week is spent just sort of goofing off? Oh, a good 60%. Good man. And most people do. Most people do. Uh, I reckon a good 60% of people goof off most of the time. Uh, so uh, th- any, any letters you want after your name, Nick? Um, no, 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 Dan. None at all. What can we do about... Uh, None at all. Uh, uh, yeah, no, we can call you uh, uh, Nick, ESB. That's on Sweet Bill. He's Nick. Absolutely, yes. E on Sweet Bill. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. There's Nick in Worcester Park goofing off. Uh, just need a couple of more people now. We're actually goofing we, off we need to six form. More. Six to more. To form. No, there's a man in Goat will write some down. They don't all come through on the air. But uh, okay. here, here is Peter on the M4, by the way. Here's Peter. Good morning, Peter. Doing, Dan? Uh, there's this machine behind me. won't play today, isn't it? Whenever I play this music, Peter, I don't know what that's all about. But, uh, Peter, you are part of the Dead Beats Club, too, aren't you? Certainly am. Tell Certainly us the circumstances am. of it. You what? Tell us the circumstances of it. Go on. Oh, uh, I should be delivering a lecture right now in my literary theory class on Sigmund Freud. <laughs> oh, that's a lovely one. I forget. Yeah, I, I usually leave at five, but because you're back on the radio, well, I've, you. I've told my students to go somewhere else, Good and man. I've left at four. Well, I, I, you know, impulsions I trust we live up to it. It'll, it'll smooth out and all of that. But uh, and, and what kind of attack is the Lee? Uh, uh, oh yes, the man who goat says, "Give us a portion of this lecture now." Go on, I'll give the portion. Uh, let me, let well, me hold it. Hang on, let me find the appropriate uh, Sigmund Freud music to put behind it. Hang on one second, one minute. Let's go through me little things here. No, I don't want that. No, I don't want that. 
No, yeah, this will do. This is Sigmund Freud music right it's here. It's better be Sigmund Freud music. <laughs> <laughs> there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, for, for a while, it was just uh, other music, but this is Sigmund Freud music. This is a good and sleazy, which, let's face it, Freud was nothing if not in the gutter. So, uh, give it to us, Peter. What have you got? Well, the first phase is polymorphous perversity. Mm hmm. And in polymorphous perversity, there are three erotogenic zones. Carry on. The oral, the anal, and the phallic. That's plenty there. Thank you very much indeed. I, uh, you know, so what did I tell you? Exactly the right music. Exactly the right music. And, if you, want, and if you want to hear more of that, uh, you can hear it on our uh, medium wave band on 0800 500 300. It's our medium wave band. You call in, you can hear that. But I'm afraid it is £1.50 a minute. Uh, what, what else do you want to tell us, Peter? Um, my wife is extremely excited that you're back, and yeah. she wants to claim a minute. Are there any left? Oh, come on, they went in the first, well, 120, no, we're gone, 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 leave her. You know, you're not going to be dead beats around here. It's not like the John Gaunt show where we have to say, come on, let's have you. Ask oh, me well, to use the phone. we rearrange our entire travelling schedule. Well, I bless you for that, and I hope we can uh, live up to the, 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 the curse There's of our no popularity. There's no minutes left. <laughs> no, there aren't, there really aren't. Refusing you know to believe the way it that. works. No, there isn't. I'll tell you what you can have. I'll what? give you the first half hour of the drive time show that follows. There it is. The half, the first half an hour is yours, Peter, on the M4. No, if, no, no. Amanda, my wife. Throwing the, throwing the good lady in the way is not going to alter the fact that you can, someone's going to have to lay down and take a bullet for your minute. Although, wasn't there someone who had two minutes? Oh, yeah, there was. Chris the Lizard got a bit greedy. Hold on. So here's the oh, option no, then. no, no. Mountain Goat saying that's been sorted. Oh. Sorry, Peter. Going to have to lose you there. I apologize to you and Amanda. Give us a quick one over there while I sort that last one. Uh, so uh, Stephen Walton on Thames wants LOT, listening on the train. Good, good thing. Uh, and that counts mm -hmm. as uh, not, not doing what he should be either. Uh -huh. okay, uh, Denise says, am I correct in remembering that Balin's mom keeps her salt and pepper shaker set in a coffin? Yes. Yes, she does. Keep uh, we're back to, uh, as, as we began in the beginning, I yes. think we're going to play out now. Are you circle. sitting there for any reason, dear, or is it just a... Uh, no? I've just enjoy it. That's Monica. Well, uh, we're done again. Look at that. Is, is that it? As, it, as I described to you two hours ago, it's absolutely like a genie. It's like uh, when you break open the genie and throw the match in there, it goes, Woof, and the show is over with. And it is over with for another day. We seem to have our deadbeat club. If we haven't, I'm sure that uh, Mountain Goat will sort that out tomorrow we'll play out with this hang on there's mending fences that'll be more country music what can i tell you it's the one in the machine right now so this <laughs> You can email any time you like at margaret.rutherford at bbc.co.uk Still upset about the fight we had last night. Vashti Bunyan tomorrow. Long That's frightening the life out of everyone. Vashti Bunyan tomorrow on the show. Miss, you know, we, we were pretty much responsible of bringing her back. Oh, pretty much. Congratulations. Yeah, we did, yeah. yeah. Thank you very much indeed, Belen Leonard. My pleasure to be back.